At the end of your life, what will be your legacy? What will you leave behind for future generations? For the world, join the world messenger, Isabella Lundberg, each week as she brings you a new distinguished guest from the business, sports, or entertainment world to share their success, their struggles, and their lessons. They will share their insights into current hot topics that affect everyone. Isabella facilitates an intimate, vulnerable environment to find the true value of humanity and real leadership. Are you ready for your legacy? The legacy that matters? Hello, hello, my beautiful friends. It's Isabella over here, the world messenger, and I'm inviting you for another epic episode of Legacy Leader Show. I wanted to address a very hot topic that so many of you asked me to elaborate further, um, specifically my Forbes article where I addressed leading with AI revolution, how to do that effectively. Obviously, it's a big question to so many. What are the best practices and how leaders, specifically executive leaders, can position to do this successfully? I don't blame why so many obviously are contemplating where to start, how to do it, and obviously um, be able to corral their talent and team to participate. So with obviously everything that is so rapidly changing in technology space and digital footprint, we need to really look at what are those emerging trends? What those trends are shaping up right now in terms of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and other software tools and models to enhance our day-to-day, but also to really forecast what is coming and happening in the future, how we are going to together revolutionize businesses and obviously operations and reshape industries, depending where we are sitting at, right? So from an executive leadership perspective, I know that is huge, huge undertaking and requires a lot of patience, a lot of trial and error, adoption, uh, willingness to change and willingness to transform, but also obviously take some risk. So when you really ask me where to start with AI, that is something that I've broken down in three specific recommendations that I really see a great opportunity for everyone to partake in. How do you actually start with number one, customer experience? Obviously, we're seeing tremendous need that is shaping so many industries, understanding where our customers are at, what needs to change in their world, how can we help them in that process? not only from selfish reasons to increase customer loyalty, but really from opportunities where we can truly anticipate their needs and be able to lead them during the most transformative times, enhance this customer satisfaction, delivery others a product or services, and truly lead with great recommendations so that they can leverage and utilize not only on the analytical side of an um, obviously customer data, but also different AI-driven algorithms, as well as anticipation and needs of the customer preferences uh, where they are going to need us in the future. The number two step that I found uh, or opportunity is operational optimization. Yes, we definitely always should strive for operational excellence, but that is very important through optimized process and optimized lens. We're seeing a lot of disruption specifically right now through supply chain, through a lot of demands, costs, delays, but also issues that are really affecting um, so many ways due to uh, not be able to identify where these uh, bottlenecks are. And by doing that, we can also predict which area of optimization needs to be improved. Um, Either we're dealing with inventory, either we're dealing with uh, products itself, scheduling, planning, financial allocation, but definitely talent allocation at the same time. And the third component uh, or the point that I wanted to highlight here, again, where do we start? Where do we start this journey with AI would be around the risk management. So many are definitely going through internal risk management points, and some of them are obviously putting us in a situation where we are 
How can we mitigate Miss Isabella? How can we uh, do things better? How, how do we uh, make sure that we're assessing them correctly? Do we get timely, relevant picture of what is going on? And if, unless we do that, detecting unusual activities just from, from cybersecurity are not enough and obviously understanding where the potential threats might be. But we're also talking about risks that has to do uh, how we conduct business, not just on the World Wide Web, but otherwise also with mutually agreed on changes that we're seeing that so many organizations are bringing their talent back to offices. Uh, we need to also be able to understand where these optimized needs for risk management are coming in play. And AI-powered systems are definitely a great way to help to navigate that. But then now we're looking additional component that I want to stress out. Uh, so now that you know where to start, where are three natural most rewarding processes or elements there to be um, the guiding your teams from executive leadership standpoint. We also need to look at it where the potential benefits are, because a lot of times those benefits are not as clear. And I'm hearing this in dialogue. How this can benefit me and my organization, the regardless of what industry it might be and size, these are the four key benefits of leveraging AI right now in your inter internal systems uh, in your organization. One is obviously by enhancing efficiency. So many organizations could improve their operations, day-to-day -day work, and also reduce the critical um, issues related to human error, minimize again those risks, right? Uh, and then also be able to streamline their processes by leveraging not only um, and for artificial intelligence, but also machine learning, you guys can see tremendous shifts, not only in algorithms and optimized resource allocations and driving the cost a reduction, but also optimization across various functions. Uh, we're seeing this done so many times already with some large companies. And one of those that we all know how they did increase that with their uh, processes, and customer care is Amazon, right? The other piece where we see tremendous value, it's a data-driven decisions. Right now, executives are dealing more than ever with so much demand and the making right decisions. Uh, and those decisions cannot be done without supported data. So it's very important to have a right data sets, analyze it properly, and then utilize it effectively. As a result, we'll enhance productivity, will help with automation when it's needed in terms of process, and ultimately, again, make those better, faster, more effective data-driven decisions. The third value of AI where we see that it's hugely helping companies to make their choices and decisions uh, how to increase uh, utilization is through obviously gaining competitive advantage. If that is not happening fast, quickly, uh, I don't know um, where you're going to be in the next few years because nobody wants to be left behind. But also you want to make sure that what you're doing is making sense for your industry, your environment. And we're seeing a lot of solutions that are being um, integrated as a result, uh, obviously, of these um components. And uh, if we are not providing this tremendous driven competitive advantage uh, through various ways of increasing and helping timely relevant customer care, uh, types of services that we maybe need to enhance and change, uh, and we will have a much more struggle, right, to create sustainability that everybody right now in current times on global scale are looking for. So now you might be also wondering, and this is why I address this in this very quick five best practices, how to use it. Now do you know where the benefits are? Now do you know why you should have it? Then where do you start? It's a very, very common question. And I wanna make sure that you're looking things through this five-pronged approach of best practices that I'm seeing that are really working effectively. And number one step in that process should be having the clear objectives. If you don't have clear objectives, 
just going to be really much more difficult to uh, create this improving operational efficiency. And obviously, ultimately, the end goal where you are today and where your current future state uh, is going to lead you. The second step that I would encourage you to also uh, taking into consideration is maintaining data quality and focusing on privacy. We're having already a plethora of risks and how do we mitigate those risks is by doing obviously qualitative uh, data, quantitative qualitative data, privacy, but also different metrics and keeping data insured but also keep it in integrity, Make, making sure that is meeting compliances, the best practices, and uh, uh, fitting into all those regula regulations that are ultimately leading to build the trust by consumer and stakeholders. That is really, really biggie. Um, the third step in that process should be also creating and building learning culture. I can't tell you how important that is because so many organizations are not obviously having that mindset. And right now, if ever, it's opportunity to start making shift because nothing's going to happen unless you foster internal collaboration between your talented team and tap into the brilliance through all those either business units all the way to leveraging executive uh, leaders decision making and that will be driving efficiency transformation and of course my favorite word innovation the fourth step in the process also here is i cannot tell you how important it is to consider ethics in true sense of ethics, what they mean. Addressing ethical concerns very quickly early on, just because we don't have fully everywhere yet regulations on everything, that doesn't mean this is not something that you should not be practicing and exercising. We all know what a good practice looks like, what the frameworks need to be developed, how important it is to ensure fairness, transparency, and more than ever, accountability about our executive leadership teams. And lastly, the fifth step that I see uh, that is essential, it is to really start small, but start and scale fast. Quickly, when you get uncomfortably comfortable with the change and transformation with your talent and team, with your leadership team, you will be able to really see what's working and be able quickly to build on. When you create that quick success, you always can scale it up and gradually add uh, those additional components and have a full-fledged AI implementation. Closing, I just really want to say again, thank you for being here with me today as I'm sharing some really valuable components that so many of you demanded uh, and asked me about based on, again, Forbes article that I wrote and that created not only a lot of buzz and interest, but also viewership and a lot of follow-up questions. So in closing, I really want to be clear that regardless where you might be on the AI journey, it is must have to have inclusive leadership, executives, talents, and teams in the same room or in an organization having these dialogues. It's very important that these conversations are happening, that we're understanding concerns, that we're also arriving to our choices, decisions, and direction, as well as having opportunities, obviously, to influence some of those Again, customer-centric experiences that are not only increasing customer and talent experience and excellence, improving security, streamlining operations, and also driving transformation, innovation, and much needed change. Looking forward to hearing your uh, success stories, and I cannot wait to hear some of your comments down below. Cheers. Thank you for listening to Legacy Leader Show. If you enjoyed the content and had a positive experience, then please leave us a positive rating. In addition, leave us positive review whenever you are listening on whatever platform there might be. Make sure your friends and family also know about the benefit and value that we provide and what we have to offer. Cheers.